Foundations of Faith, we're teaching from um, using our foundation scriptures of Habakkuk 2.4, Romans 1.17, Galatians 3.11, Hebrews 10.38, all say in one form or another that the just shall live by faith. We talked about last week how that faith operates in two veins, um, faith in God and faith uh, faith in or towards God and then the faith of God. Um, and so then we talk, got into how, how do we get faith and where we find in Romans ten seventeen it says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Then we spent some time talking about the authority of the written word, how that the written word is God's final authority, that um, the the continual and consistent attacks against the authority of the written word is for one purpose alone is to undermine its authority and thus if it doesn't carry any authority we can't have a standard or a place or a basis of faith. Um, so uh, that's kind of where we left off last week so let's kind of get into here. <clears throat> We're going to talk about um, we talked about how we get faith. Uh, it comes uh, Romans ten seventeen. faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now let's talk about specifics. Um, areas of, of, of faith, um, of gaining faith for. Uh, once again, this is the, uh, remember we're using, we, we stopped um, putting the scripture references on the wall, uh, or the entire verse, we're putting the references for you to use your Bible with, and uh, so you can mark up your Bible, and um, my son will bring his next week. <laughs> He, ran, he, he came up from wrestling practice, ran out the door, and, and he, all he had on his mind was chicken and pastry. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that right, buddy? Uh-huh, uh-huh. All right. So, let's, let's talk about this, because if, if faith comes by the Word of God, then how do you get faith for certain things? You would find scriptures that cover that which you're looking for. Now, for salvation, let's look over in Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians does follow Galatians and does precede Philippians. <coughs> Ephesians chapter 2 says in verse 8, For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. Now, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 shows us that faith is the main means by which we receive by which we receive the um, grace of God. And the grace of God is what, you know, by grace are you say so. But we receive that by faith. And if you look back into Romans chapter 10, verse 8, we release our faith. We talked about this a little bit last week. But Romans 10, 8 through 10, or 11 actually, says, What saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth of the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now remember what Romans, I mean, Hebrews eleven six 6 says, without faith it is impossible to please him, for they that come to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So, um, in order to come to God, you must believe that he is. And that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Um, one guy came to a minister one time and said, if you can prove to me there's a God, um, I'll get saved. If you can't, and I die and go to hell, and there is a God, it's your fault. And uh, he said, I, he said I, I'm not responsible for proving to you there's a God. You, the Bible says, he that, that, want, that cometh to God must believe that he is. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. They that come at them must believe that he is. In other words, you have to make a decision that you believe he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Uh, it's never been the Christian uh, responsibility or obligation to prove that God exists. You can't, you know, uh, people, people are going to believe what they want to believe. And you have to make a decision whether you're going to believe God exists or not. Okay, so the word is now thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. And here it is, that if you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, the King James says Lord Jesus, the other translations say that Jesus is Lord, and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart are the inner man, the, the inner core man. Remember Second uh, Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23 says that um, I pray your whole body, soul and spirit be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord. 
Man is a spirit. He has a soul. He lives in a body. Uh, I like to say it this way. Your body is your earth suit. Without it, you can't hang around. You've got to leave and go somewhere. And uh, your choices are heaven or hell. That's real, real, real plain there. Um, so with the heart, and he's not talking about your, your, your organ that pumps blood. He's talking about the inner man, the spirit man. Man believes unto righteousness or right standing with God. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. In other words, you profess his lordship. You confess his lordship because of what you believe in your heart. For the scripture says, whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich upon all them, all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. All right. So, uh, in order to, you know, uh, receive salvation, uh, Romans 10, 8 through uh, this passage tells us, uh, you have to confess, you have to believe, and you have to accept. You have to confess, believe, and accept. You confess him as Lord, you believe in your heart, and you accept his lordship, okay? So we receive, we receive salvation by confessing his lordship, believing he is, uh, Jesus has been raised from the dead, and accepting that into our lives. We receive his lordship by, those, by that method. You don't get saved because you crawl up and down the abbey and cut yourself. Uh, that was what was Martin Luther was doing when he, um, he, he uh, the Lord spoke to him and said, the just shall live by faith. He was on his knees in the abbey, bleeding. They were bleeding from crawling, in, crawling on them, uh, trying to do penance. And, and God spoke to him and said, the just shall live by faith. And then he went out and wrote his, his um, uh, thesis, 100th thesis, and um, <laughs> was declared a heretic. Nailed it to the front door of the church and said, the just shall live by faith. And they tried to kill him. Anyway. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, you got to really, man, you, you make a, <laughs> you may stand and but they tried to kill him for it. <laughs> you know, they like to throw the Wesley brothers out of the pulpit when they came back from America. <laughs> they went back and started preaching, you know, some stuff, and they, they tried to throw them out. I mean, went right in, in the middle of the sermon, tried to throw them out of the church. So he went out and stood on his dad's grave and finished the sermon. His dad was great, buried in the graveyard right outside the church. So then when they threw him out, he went out and stood on top of his dad's grave and finished the sermon. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes the price. <clears throat> now, Acts 11 we're still, we're still talking about receiving salvation. Um, you have to hear a message. You know, in other words, um, there has to be the, the gospel preached, the gospel heard, the gospel believed, the gospel acted upon. And how we do that is we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart. Acts 11. I'm sorry. Yeah, Acts 11, 13, and 14. And he showed us, uh, and he showed us, how he had seen an angel in his house which stood and said, Send a Joppa and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved. And if you'll go back and read this, um, Ananias um, was praying, <coughs> and um, an angel appeared to him and told him to go send to Joppa and find one Peter. Who when he'll come to you, he'll preach to you. The angel couldn't preach it. The angel couldn't preach the gospel message. It was, it was left for humanity to do. That is the responsibility of, of people to go out and preach the gospel. Angels aren't permitted to do it. Pre Peter had to come and preach the word. So go find him. They, they told him where to go find the guy. Told him who to go find. Where to find him. But the angel couldn't tell him how to do it. It had to come, had to come from a, a person who preached the gospel. And then Mark 16 Verses 15 through 18. We'll back at verse 14 real quick. Afterward, he, that is Jesus, appeared unto the eleven as they sat at beat <clears throat> and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Now, you remember Thomas, don't you? The, the term doubting Thomas didn't come by accident. It came because Thomas said, except I see, see him, put my finger in the, print, put the nail in his hands, thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And Jesus shows up a few days later and says, be not faithless, but believing. Um, and then Thomas goes, oh, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said, you, saw, you believe because you saw me. Blessed is the, are those who believe who have not seen. And so he appears to 11 and, and, and rebukes them because they're, they're being hard-headed. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. 
He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, or the Greek actually says exercise authority over demons. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. They drink any deadly thing. It shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Now, none of this is talking about having snake handling services or drinking poison to prove anything. Uh, and, and new tongues is not your linguistic, uh, a linguist. You know, I, I one preacher one time said he was preaching on this, and he said, you know, new tongues was, uh, you, you spoke many languages. And, you know, and he got about halfway down doing some teaching. He said, people, I don't have a clue what I'm talking about. Just come back next week and hear another sermon. And walked, off the pul walked out of the pul pulpit. Uh, it was John Osteen. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, Joel Osteen's dad said so he got, got done about preaching halfway through, preaching on the gifts of the Spirit, and just finally said, I have no clue what I'm talking about. Forget everything I've said. Because he said, you know, the word of knowledge was education. The word of wisdom was our philosophers. Uh, the gifts of healings were doctors and, you know, uh, working of miracles. And, and he, he finally got in. He got himself so deep in there he couldn't, he, 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 making this stuff up, he just finally said, quit. I quit. <laughs> No speaking. One guy said one time, speaking with new tongues, man, if you cuss, you stop cussing. And I, I always thought, well, what about the kid who didn't cuss and got saved? Does that mean he started cussing? <laughs> you know? I mean, because you know, if he didn't cuss, he got a new tongue, he's going to start. Because if, if you were cussing, you stop. Well, what about a guy who didn't? He had to start doing something different. So, no, no, these are all supernatural signs that follow the preaching of the word. But it is, notice Jesus said, go in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized, shall we say. No, no they believe because they heard the gospel message preached. And so, <clears throat> salvation comes, faith for salvation comes by hearing the word on salvation. God loves all people. <laughs> God loves humanity. Might need a canoe to get out of here when we get done tonight. Hallelujah. <clears throat> also, you have faith for healing. Now, uh, healing is just as much a part of uh, something we can receive by faith from God. Acts 14. Boy, I ate too much. That chicken and pastry was, I thought it was pretty good. How many, I wish, wish y'all gone to uh, K&W instead. <laughs> <laughs> Acts 14, 7. Now, faith for healing. Listen here. This is, um, and there, verse 7 of Acts 14, and there they preached the gospel. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb who had never walked. The same heard Paul speak. Now, I know we covered this a little bit on Sunday because we kind of we got some dual, message, or dual themes going on. Um, uh, that are crossing over each other, but that's okay. Amen. Um, and Sunday night we're talking about healing, so we, we kind of get into this one, but you know, we'll just cover it again. You hear it twice the same week, it won't hurt you. Anybody ever been taught the same thing? You know, you ever, ever gone to school and had them teach you the same thing the next day they taught you the day before? Yeah. It's called review. <laughs> Amen. And everybody likes review right before the what? Yeah. The test. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who had never walked, the same heard Paul speak. Back up to verse 7. And there they preached the gospel. And the crippled man did what? He heard Paul speak. And what did Paul speak? They preached the gospel. And then it goes on and says, who steadfastly beholding him, that's Paul steadfastly beholding him, and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. Perceiving that he had faith to be healed. Guess what? As, as of the end of verse 9, guess what? He ain't healed. The man's not healed. He had faith to be healed, but he's not healed. Now, where did the faith come from for him to get healed? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Verse 7, there they preached the gospel. The same heard Paul speak. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. There they preached the gospel. The same heard Paul speak. He heard the gospel message. Faith had come to be healed. Thus, you can only deduct that healing was part of the gospel message they were preaching. 
For in order the faith to be healed to come from the gospel that he heard Paul speak, it had to include the, the, the gospel of healing as part of the message. Why? Because he had faith to be healed. And faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Romans 10, 17 again. Well, how else are you going to get faith to be healed unless the, me the message you heard, the Word of God you heard, was the Word of God that God wants you well? Because if faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, then, and you had faith to be healed, then what you heard must say that God wants you healed. No other way around it. He couldn't have been preaching about God wants you to prosper and he can get faith to be healed. Hello? No, what if you preach, if you got, if preach God wants you to prosper and give prosperity scriptures, what do you get faith for? Prosperity. Yeah. Selah. Stop and think about that for a little while. <clears throat> now, so Paul says, it says here, who Paul was steadfastly beholding him, perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet, and he leaped and walked. Now, see, here's the thing. Faith comes, but faith not acted upon will lie dormant and produce nothing. Faith must be acted upon. You see, people could get faith to be saved and not act on it. They could refuse to pursue, you know. Um, uh, one minister was telling a story one time about his brother-in-law. Actually, ran off and left his, his sister and left her in a bad state. <clears throat> and um, he would go talk to the man. And the man said, you know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I believe Jesus is Lord. I believe everything you're saying. I'm just not going to do anything about it. I'm just not going to do anything about it. Said he talked to a man, would sit there and bawl like a baby. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know hell's real, heaven's real, I know Jesus is Lord, but I'm just not going to do anything about it. Ball. Because he ran off with a, a, another woman and was living in uh, just a terrible lifestyle. He tried to talk to him, he said, I'm just not going to do anything about it. He knew what he was supposed to do, he knew he could. He said he died cursing God with his last breath. See, he had faith to believe, but he didn't act on it. He refused to act on it. This man, when Paul said, stand up right on your feet, he could have gone, I can't walk. And sat right there and never got anything, although he had faith to be healed. No, he said when he stand up right on the feet, he leaped and walked. He acted on what he believed. Amen. And uh, when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Laconia, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. <laughs> and uh, that's when they went and rent, rent their clothes. And they began to call uh, Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercurius. And um, they began to try to do alms to them. And they went and rent their clothes and saying, we're just, we're just humans. <laughs> we're here to present the, the true of the living God to you. Amen. But here, um, faith to be healed came from the Word of God. Now, let me ask you something. If you go somewhere, and every time you, you know, people talk about health, health and healing, the people go, now we never know what the Lord's will is. How are you going to have faith to be healed? Well, you know, God makes some people sick, and God can, we know God can heal. And we're going to pray, and just maybe it might be your day. Now, can you have faith that you're going to be healed? You can have hope. You can wish. Amen. Let's say we're obviously there. So we're doing two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We got about 12 people here tonight, right here in, in the room. And I have got three $1,000 bills in my wallet. Hello? And I'm going to put them in a bucket. And you're going to walk up here and I'm going to put uh, nine other pieces of paper in the same size as a dollar, as, as, the, as, a, as a, uh, American money. And I say, come on up here and put your hand in. It might be your night to get $1,000. Can you have faith you're going to get it? You can hope. You can wish you're going to be one of them. But, you know, the percentages are not in your favor. You're going to be one of them. 
because there's more plain pieces of paper than there are thousand dollar bills sitting in there and I know it's not really something they circulate they use it for transferring between banks and stuff uh, you can't get them but they're not easy uh, <coughs> but it just might be your night well how are you coming you're not coming in faith you're coming in wishing or hope you see now let's say there's 12 people in here I got 12 $1,000 bills I put them in a bucket with no other money in there say come up reach your hand in here and grab a thousand dollar bill because that's all that, there's, there's 12 of them here there's 12 $1,000 bills there's 12 people in here now how can you come now you need to come and wishing and I, I don't I don't think there's a person in this room if I tell them I had a thousand dollars they're going to give them right now that you good no no pastor no 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 you know I, 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 I'm just not worthy to receive that <laughs> uh uh some of you knock people down getting nothing in front of the line. <laughs> Might have people biting people on the ankles. Yeah. But if I tell you, if I guarantee you, here, and show it to you, here's 12, one, here's 12 $1,000 bills, and 12 people in here, I'm going to put them right here in this bucket, you come up and just grab yours. Yeah. You're not going to come up here wishing you could get one. Yeah. Yeah. You see? When we preach that we never know what God's going to do, then people have no basis for believing that he is going to do what they want him to do. Yet if we'll preach what the Word says, then we can give them faith to receive whatever it is they need from God. Now, in some places, they, you know, they, they don't believe that Jesus heals today. That's all passed away. And, I, and, and then for the life of me, you know, it's a stretch. The scriptures they try to use to do that, it's just a stretch um, to even come up with that. When there's so much here in the weight of evidence from the scripture that healing belongs to, to the church today. God wants people well. Jesus bore our sicknesses so we wouldn't have to. That sickness is evil. That even the medical profession uses the, the, the serpent on the pole, which is the, the serpent of Moses, the brazen serpent on the, from the wilderness, which is a sign of healing. And, Jesus, and the Word of God says, Jesus said, even as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so shall I be lifted up. Using that same type. He was going to bear our sicknesses. And here Paul preached the, the gospel. The man heard him speak. He had faith to be healed, meaning that healing is part of the gospel. Now, if you teach people... Now, it's, it's always a wonder. If you can get the people before the, the unbelieving believers get to them, it's just it's a beautiful thing. If you can get the people and tell them God wants them well and God wants them to have all the blessings of heaven and, and ch share from the Word before the people who don't believe anything get to them, they'll believe it. Yeah. And then it's too late. Amen. It's just too late. They've already, got, they've already experienced it. I've already, I've already received that from God. It's those people who don't believe in anything. God don't do anything anymore. I mean, some, some people preach, come on down here, this might be your day to get saved. How can you preach that when the Bible says today is the day of salvation? Yes. This just might be your day. God doesn't run a lottery system. Men do that. Hello? And I don't like lottery systems to begin with. That was that one we have in our state. It was the most unhanded political ploys ever pulled. In, you know, they waited till all the uh, other party was out on vacation somewhere and voted midnight to get it passed, the educational lottery. <coughs> so that about 10% of what actually comes in goes to education. The rest of it goes to, for the machines and the administrators and the payouts and all that stuff. God doesn't run a lottery system. See, the, Jesus said, let your yes be yes and your no be no. God says what he means and means what he says. And if he didn't want you well, he said, I, I am the Lord who makes you sick. But that's not what he said. His name in, in, in the book of Exodus is Jehovah Rapha. Uh, and, and Jehovah is a, is a well, how would you say it, Bill? Yeah, well, I mean, no, how, how when we've taken and made, added the vowels to it and all that stuff. Transliteration of, of, the, of the four letters Y-H-W-H. <clears throat> we, we transliterated that into two different words. Uh, the Germans translated into Jehovah, and all the people have translated into Yahweh from the same four letters. Okay? And, um, but they are the four, they're, 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 they're the four he Hebrew letters Y-H-W-H. -H. And um, the covenant name of God, and we say Jehovah uh, often, 
uh, and Yahweh would either one would be correct. And then hyphenated names means a compound covenant name. Jehovah Rapha, the first compound covenant name God gave himself is the Lord thy physician, the Lord that heals thee. Okay? God is our, Jesus is our healer. God has always desired to bring help and healing to humanity. Because sickness is a part of the curse. It's not a part of heaven. There's no sickness in heaven. You're not going to, you know, uh, Jesus ministered to the sick. Uh, there, were, there were even in the law, there were ways for people to get well. The brazen serpent was to heal the people. Under the ministry of the apostles in the book of Acts and uh, the evangelists and different ones in the book of Acts, healing was part of the gospel. And so faith to be healed will come from hearing what the Word says. If we don't preach what the Word says, if people don't believe it, accept it, and act on it, they're not going to be able to receive. And they're not going to be able to accept or believe or receive it if we don't tell them what the Word says or if we tell them that it, it's not for us today. I love that one. You talking about a lie out of the pit of hell that's been sold off on a bunch of folks in the church. That passed away the day the last apostle died. Oh, well, that's great. On the day we got canonized to the scriptures, other arguments that people make. Because there's no scriptural evidence for it passing away. There's no, there's no scriptural evidence for it passing away. So they make up historical things that they think works. And anybody that's honest and looks at the scriptures can't really uh, see that or, or, or receive that. Okay? So... But here, uh, Paul did pr three things. He preached the gospel. He perceived the man had faith to be healed. He told the man to stand up and walk. Man did three things. He heard Paul preach. He had faith to be healed. He leaped and walked. Now, how was the man healed? He was healed by his faith in the Word. I, I, was, I was listening to um, Brother Hagin teaching on the healing anointing. And he said something. I, and I, you know, sometimes you could hear stuff your whole life and then miss it. And then all of a sudden you hear it, see it. Start talking about how that um, um, people are healed by, by laying of hands, by transfer of anointing. Those are people just healed because they received the word. No contact was made with them. There are times Jesus, many times Jesus never even touched a person. He just spoke and said, according to your faith, be it unto you. Or the centurion came to him and said, speak the word only, my servant shall be healed. And Jesus said, I hadn't found this kind of faith in all of Israel. And the centurion was a Roman. He wasn't even a Jew. He didn't have a covenant right to it. He said, speak the word only, my servant shall be healed. And Jesus marveled. Two things Jesus marveled at in, in, in the Gospels. He marveled at centurion for his great faith. And then he marveled at the Jews for their unbelief. <laughs> Now, why did he marvel in both those cases? Because the centurion didn't have a covenant right to it, and the Jews did. The Jews should have had great faith because they had a covenant right to it. The centurion shouldn't have had faith because he didn't have a right to it. But they, all, they were operating on the opposites. The centurion had faith, and he marveled. And then the Jews who should have, should have had faith didn't, and he marveled at that. So he marveled because of their unbelief. So two things that make Jesus marvel. Faith. Unbelief. <clears throat> he will not marvel at the, at the unbelief of a sinner. And he will not marvel at the faith of a believer. But he does marvel at the unbelief of a, of a believer and at the faith of a sinner. <laughs> That'll make him marvel. Why? You know, it's like boneheads. Hello? Nathan's been caught a bonehead a couple of times in his life, hadn't you, buddy? And usually when you've done something that's what? Boneheaded. <laughs> no opinion of your father is of any private interpretation. <laughs> 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 uh, my little buddy. All right. Healings and miracles take place because the preaching of, the, of Christ, the living word, preaching that he, heal, he is the healer, that healing belongs to us in the gospel. Amen? Yeah. And the word we, uh, let's look in Acts chapter 8. I, I remember one time I was at Raymond at Alumni Week. 
And uh, this is way back. I don't think we had any kids back then. It was, it was just me and Janie. So this is pre-Jessica. And, and we were in there with uh, Brother Hagen and, and uh, a lot of the staff. And we were telling funny stories. See, that's one guy come up and tell the funniest, the, the funniest thing that ever happened to him in the pulpit. He said he was preaching on Jesus the healer. And he leaned over the pulpit like this. And when he did, he just puked. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. Yep. Blah! Anyway. Now, the, the other, that was kind of gross, isn't it? The other funny thing they told was a woman said, she was kind of, she was kind of a little bit of a large woman, and so she kind of had, you know, you know didn't have a curvy dress, kind of had a straight dress, and she said she was up leading worship, and the elastic in her pantyhose bust and just went right to the ground and she said everybody look up and praise the Lord she grabbed and ran off <laughs> I'm coming to tell that. I don't know I was telling that anyway Acts chapter 8 verse 5 I guess everybody needed to be woken up didn't they uh, verse 5 then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them People giving one, uh, people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies, and that were lame were healed, and there was great joy in the city. Now let me say something here. In order for it to drive demons out, for people to be healed, for palsies to be taken care of, part of the message was that Jesus had authority over demons. That the part of the gospel message was that you had, you know, you could be liberated from demons, that you could be healed, have signs of wonders. And so we had devils coming out, um, palsies, lame, were all healed. Hello? But it's, how did that happen? Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ. He preached Christ unto them. I don't believe in devils. Well, Jesus did. They talked to him. Hello? He just had authority over them. I don't, I, listen, I don't get afraid of devils. You don't need to be afraid of devils. You don't need to, now, you don't need to sit around and watch The uh, Exorcist or The Omen and crazy stuff like that and, and then wonder why there's voices in your room in the middle of the night. <laughs> I mean, come on now. I mean, you just don't, you just don't play with the devil. Yeah. But you don't have to be afraid of them either. You know, they preach Christ. So pre now listen, they, here's an interesting thing. A uh, side note to the story. There was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city, used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out to him himself with some great one, to whom all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. Now it's amazing how many people are deceived by people who operate in, in um, satanic power and think it's God. That, you used to have that woman every year. It's every year in the, the magazine. She prophesied all the stuff that's going to happen for the next year. And she was only right 20% of the time. Gene something. Dixon. Yeah. Every year she had her prediction. Well, I mean, I don't know about you, but if I'm going to invest my money in a thing, and you're only right 20% of the time, I ain't investing with you anymore. If you're my tour guide, and you only get me to the right place 20% of the time, I'm not following you anymore. <laughs> Hello. I mean, there's, you know, I've, we've, I've traveled all over the world. There's places you don't want to end up in the wrong place. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. I mean, I was in Bangkok, Thailand. I didn't even want to be in the right place hardly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the first night they had me in the hotel, and uh, the very next day, the overseer of the school came and said, we're moving you. I said, why? They said, well, we just found out this hotel is nothing but a prostitution hotel. Oh, no. <laughs> Get me out of here. And the people said, Don't, get him out of there. <laughs> and so they took me to some really nice upscale, and just poured water down my front. Really nice upscale place. I was much happier than the new place, too. It was really nice. You know? But you know I, I mean, I've, I've traveled. I've been places. been in some strange hotels. And, uh, but, yeah, they said, get him out of there. <laughs> Thank you for getting me out of here. Oh, me. You don't want to you don't make the wrong turn. Listen, you don't want to go to Paris and get the wrong, get the wrong turn. There's places in Paris you don't want to be. So, uh, <clears throat> um, how did I get on that? Oh, he, be he bewitched the people. 
and to him had regard as long time he bewitched him with sorceries. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God, the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also. Because he figured out he was just tricking the people and manipulating the people. He ran into something that was bigger and greater than him. Amen. Said amen. Yeah. Notice, Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ. And the result of preaching Christ was miracles, devils coming out, lame people walking, palsy people healed, and a great joy yes. in the city. Yes, That's a great joy in the city. Luke chapter 6, verse 17. Something we can't overlook here. <coughs> this is right after Jesus names his 12 disciples, and then in verse 17 it says, And he came down with them and stood in the plain in the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon which came to underline this hear him and to be healed of their diseases and they that were vexed with unclean spirits and they were healed and the whole multitude sought to touch him for there went out went virtue out of him dynamon uh, and healed them where we get this word dynamite from virtue or power went out of him and healed them all. Now notice it says here they came to do what? Number one to hear. Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. If you want to help people as in as a Christian and ministering to other people and, and, and helping people in different difficult situations we're going to have to give them what the word says to help them. They, they can't believe until they hear the truth. You can't help them without the truth. You can't, you can't help them. Amen? I mean, when somebody's told they got six months to live and there's no hope for them, you can't help them by saying, bless your heart, I'm sorry. You can't help them. I mean, we, we thank God for medical doctors. We thank God for all the medical science we know. I mean, I mean Luke was a physician. He was a doctor. Um, we think, but you know, there's things that medical science can't do. We're still looking for the cure for cancer. We're still looking for the cure for AIDS. We're still looking for the cure for other things. Um, you know, the, the, one of the most common things that happens all the time every year is what? The common cold. And guess what they don't have a cure for? <laughs> the common cold. They come up with a flu vaccine every year for the, whatever flu is coming up, but they still don't have one for the common cold. All right? Um, and so... Man is limited in his ability, but, but when people, listen, we can help people when we give them what the Word of God says. If they'll believe what the Word says, they can walk free from disease and sickness because they believe what God's Word says. But you can't help them by telling them, well, you just never know what God's going to do. Well, that's pretty random. Like I said, God doesn't operate the lottery system. Well, 15 people come up tonight, you know, uh, numbers 2 and 7 and 12 are getting saved tonight. You are the lucky winners of Salvation Lotto. It doesn't work that way. Or come into a prayer lining and, and be ministered to for, for sickness. And, uh, and, and say, well, we're going to draw your cards tonight. And if we, your number comes up, you're the lucky healing lotto winner. Now, they came to hear and to be healed. When the message is preached properly, preached according to what the Word says, people can be healed. Um, <coughs> Schofield's, Bi <coughs> Schofield's Bible. I must be, like, really young. Now, I'm 53, so relatively, my voice should have stopped cracking at 20. So I've got, you know, I must be one to live to about 160 or something. <laughs> It's still cracking at 53. I've got, I've got some extra time added in there. 
Schofield, um, Dr. Schofield said that both the Greek and Hebrew, wor Hebrew words for salvation, are you understand salvation? In the Greek is soterius. It comes from the Greek noun sozo. And so that is what we refer to as the sozo word group in the Greek language. And uh, just, just to remind you, in Greek, the noun comes from the verb. So you take the meaning of the verb and you, you get the meaning of the noun from the verb. In English, it's opposite. Our verbs get their meaning from the noun. All right. So um, this is a this is what we refer to as a sozo word group. Um, the Hebrew equivalents in the, in their word group to sozo. So both saved, which is the noun sozo, and salvation, soterius in Hebrew and Greek, imply the idea deliverance, safety, preservation, healing, and soundness. Salvation includes the idea, deliverance, safety, preservation, healing, and soundness. What soundness we have to do with your mind? God's not given us a spirit of fear, but that of power and of love and of a sound mind. Deliverance, you know, we can be free from devils or demons, really. There's only one devil, many demons. Satan is the devil. Um, really, the other references to devils is really should be translated demons. Uh, we can be delivered from their influence and their authority and their power. Safety, kept safe. You know, God wants you safe. God wants to preserve you. Amen? Preserve you with long life. Amen? And healing, healing. God wants you well. Amen? Isn't it good to have a, have a God who wants you well? <coughs> Jesus, um, Psalm 103 Uh, I'm trying to get back to Psalm 103. Verses, you know, you can read through 1 through 4. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. You might want to underline all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeems thy life from destruction, who crowns thee with love and kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Sounds a lot like uh, salvation, doesn't it? For, forgives you your iniquities, heals your diseases, redeems you from destruction, crowns you with love and kindness and tender mercies, satisfies your mouth with good things, and renews your youth. Sounds like deliverance, safety, preservation, healing, and soundness to me. Yes. Amen? So that's, that's how God operates. That's what God wants for all of us. Without preaching that, people can't believe that. If you don't preach that, people can't believe it. Now, if you preach Jesus saves, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, you know, you know uh, or uh, some people say Jesus saves from a burning hell. Jesus saves from, and you preach that all the time. Man, people are going to believe that Jesus saves from a burning hell. And I do too. But I believe he does other things besides that. I believe he heals, and delivers, and, amen, preserves, makes us sound, keeps us safe, amen. And so in order for people to have faith for those things, then we have to hear it preached. In order for you to have faith for that, you've got to see it in the Word. Preached in the Word and then studied on by the hearer and the recipient, to looking into the Word for themselves to see what, it's, see what it says. I don't know what that was over there. Is it Della? It's okay. No, this is okay. Just <laughs> I, I tell you, and, and whenever we build our own building, we're going to build it with sound or proof of walls or hallways between the children's ministry and the sanctuary. Because um, the kids take over. <laughs> they get loud, right? Um no matter what we need from God, the way we receive it is by faith, and faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. So if we're going to receive from God, if we're going to receive from heaven, what are we going to have to do? We're going to have to hear it said, spoken in the Word. We're going to have to find it from the Word. We're going to have to see it in the Word in order to receive it. Excuse me. Amen? So, 
Uh, we're, we're, you know, I know we're running, we, ran, we started a little bit late tonight, but I'm not, I'm not going to move into the next one. Next week, we're going to talk about what is faith. Okay? We talked about tonight, you know, how, how do we get faith? Faith just comes by hearing what the Bible says. <clears throat> Brother Hagin used to say, if you need something from God, find scriptures that back it up. Look into the Bible. Uh, he was telling a story about a lady one time. She, she went to a church that, um, a denominational church. It wasn't, you know, what they refer to as full gospel or whatever. And um, she called up and said, I, you know, uh, I want him to come by and visit and pray with her. And, uh, and he went, and she says, now, now Brother Hagin, um, I go to such and such, such and such church, and uh, they don't have healing over there. Now, I've been in a couple of your meetings where you were teaching and said, and I heard you say that the Bible says, you know, she started quoting scriptures that he had spoken, and said, I heard you say that Jesus appeared to you, placed his finger in the right hand, into your palms of your hands, and a healing anointing was given to you. If you tell the people, believe it, they would believe it, that they would receive that anointing, and they'd be healed in their bodies. She said, I heard you say that. He said, I said it. She said, well, now, you just lay your hands on me, and I'll be healed. I <laughs> said, okay. <laughs> That's real simple. Because she knew what the Bible says. She heard him tell the story. And she said, and at the church I go to, they don't have any. She had that much figured out. Hallelujah. If you, do, if you don't get the message to the people, they can't receive it. Yeah. So it's important for us to um, share the truth. And, and that's why I'm not real big about watering stuff down and hiding it from people and making it palatable, you know, that we would upset somebody by saying something. Oh, you start talking about that healing stuff and people won't come. Well, it, until they're sick. Until they're told there's no hope for you. Amen. I mean, Bill's wife, Belinda, they told her there's no hope for her. Her, her hope was a heart transplant. That's not a good testament. That's not a good doctor's report. And you don't want the doctor walking in and saying, you know what, here, here, you, know, you have postpartum cardiomyopathy and, and here's, here's, your, here's, our, um, um, here's what we can do for you. We've got to give you a heart transplant. Without a heart transplant, you can't live. And we're going to try to give you some drugs to get you strong enough so you can have the heart transplant. But she took hold of the word. And the same doctor, same heart specialist right here at Moses Cone Hospital. And, said, you know, and her, 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 her uh, pediatrician wrote a letter. I saw the letter. Wrote a letter uh, testifying to the fact that she had had that. Didn't he? And um, went back to the same heart specialist a year later. Because what happened was they said, we came in one day and said, we're going to introduce you to the heart transplant team tomorrow. And, um, and they're looking for a heart. I mean, you know, they, they've taken their blood, their blood type stuff, and they're looking for a heart. Because <clears throat> they know she's going to die. If they don't get her a heart transplant. But she's feeding on the Word. She's speaking the Word. We're believing the Word. We're quoting the Word. She's declaring the Word. Janie made healing cards for it. She had healing cards in the room to, to flip through. Brother Bill was in there preaching the Word to her. We're in the, we're in the family out in the visiting area uh, speaking the Word, having scripture wars. <laughs> you know, on healing. So speaking the Word. So they came in one day and said, we're going to introduce you to the heart transplant team tomorrow. Came in the next day and said, we're going to hold off on that. Now listen, these are not, these are not fly by night, uh, uh, you know, doofuses. Yeah. They know what's going on. Her heart's gone flabby. There's no muscle tone to it. That's what, that's what cardiomyopathy is. Postpartum, is, it is because of a childbirth. It, it happens, and it's a rare thing, but it, it kicks in, and the heart muscle just goes flabby. It can't pump the, it can't pump the blood. There's nothing to do to re regain the, uh, the elasticity and the, and the function of the heart. The, the thing to do is to transplant it. Came back in and said, we're going to hold off on that. She was home in two weeks. A year later, went back to the same doctor's same specialist, had them examine her, and, she, and they said, well, you're fine. She said, what does that mean? The guy looked at her and said this. He said, if you had just walked in my office today and we did test on you, I would say you've never had a problem with your heart. Did that happen by accident? Nope. Was it a quirk of nature? Nope. And she had not taken hold of the word. Unless she had gotten a heart transplant, she'd been dead. And even heart transplant don't live, but you know, you have a real, just a, how, how long? 10 to, 15. 10 to 15 years. She'd already be dead or had to have another one because Ben's 19. 
she'd been, she'd been buried four years ago. <laughs> and she lived to the high end of it. But what happened? She took hold of the word. We told her Jesus wants her well. Jesus is the healer. She believed it, acted upon it, got a new heart. And I said, got a new heart. I mean, we got it doctor documented. <laughs> Praise God. We're, just, we're not just making this up. We got a miracle. But we didn't, listen, you get miracles because you believe for them. Amen. You don't get them going twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. You don't get them, oh, just, just, we just a hope and a pray that somehow, some way, God will move on Belinda's behalf. You never know what the Lord's going to do. And we did. Called for a miracle, believed it, declared it, stood in faith about it, got it. 